The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably host. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends. And as always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today before we get into the rest of it? Well, of course, uh, down fairly hard. The market's actually saying this is because of the tensions with uh, North Korea and others. Um, uh, the market was jittery before all this started. Uh, valuations were fairly high. Doesn't mean that they, when they're high, they can't go higher. But um, what I wanted to see in this was whether or not we came back with monster volume. And the volume was good. Uh, wasn't bad. But uh, I think uh, yesterday, I'll, in fact, I'll bring it up here in a little bit. Um, I think we did 3.5 billion shares or a little more, or maybe 3.6 billion shares on the NYSE, which is, you know, if you're trying to leave the planet Earth, there's basically a, a speed at which you need to go to to get into orbit and then to leave orbit. And that's called escape velocity. And we've been kind of bouncing around in these areas. We didn't certainly didn't have the energy on the high side. So when we came down here, was the energy uh, explosive? It was good, but not damning. And I think for the bulls, that's what they were looking at. Again, uh, as I said yesterday, I thought of a couple of things. One is that if you're thinking about going short, the you know from that drop from let's call it 2490 down here to a low of uh, 2437. Why don't we look at that as kind of, uh, actually, what was it, 2432? Why don't we look at that as a 50% retracement and see if that can't get up there? Options suggest that why we are not going back to all-time highs uh, again in the next few days, that it's more than likely that expiration on the S&P cash comes somewhere around 24 Eh, let's call it 2465 to 2480. They're going to push this thing up a little through next week. I think as the weekend goes through and some of the uh, sabers get rattled a little less, that'll be it. Anyway, we're up uh, almost seven points on the S&P cash at 2445. And this is going to be a very important week because if we go up on light volume, uh, that's going to tell you one thing. And if we go up and people start pouring back in the market now that they, quote, quote, think there are deals, that's another thing. Uh, as yesterday, I said a lot of the big stocks weren't getting a lot of volume. The overall indices were. We're going to look at a few of those uh, today and see how they're doing on the follow-up. But I didn't like a few of them uh, being down on such light volume. If we're really going to start seeing some mass selling, especially in the uh, Dow and uh, bigger S&P stocks. Uh, I thought maybe something else would have come in. And of course, today's Friday, it's a light volume day. Maybe we just get a bounce and we go back down. But I have a feeling this is the part of a bigger pattern. And uh, eh, that's all I got to say about that. In the meantime, we always like to start the show off with a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating, and on this day, what do we have going on? Well, it's certainly, I just sound a little bassy today for some reason. Um, oh, on this day, 1934, group of federal prisoners classified as the most dangerous arrives in Alcatraz Island. A 22-acre rocky outcrop situated 1.5 miles off the uh, shore of San Francisco. 
the convicts, the first civilian prisoners to be housed in the new high-security penitentiary, joined a few dozen military prisoners left over from the island's stay as a U.S. military prison. The first shipments of civilian prisoners arrived on this day in 1934. Later that month, more shiploads arrived, featuring a mother comment, uh, Al Capone, uh, George Machine Gun Kelly, and other ones uh, landed on Alcatraz. Uh, I have been to Alcatraz. I think everybody that listens to the show knows that through the 90s, I spent a great deal of time in San Francisco for work. And instead of getting a hotel, um, because it was nothing, you know, you could watch TV on it, in, you know, in a hotel room, but they were expensive even back then. Uh, I found out that you could rent a houseboat right down there on Pier 39. And I spent uh, some of my time going over to Alcatraz, the rest of my time uh, helping out a, a bunch of veterans working on the Pampanito, that World War II sub that's located there. It's actually, uh, when we were working on it, uh, was uh, getting ready for a uh, movie called uh, Up Periscope with uh, Kelsey Grammer. Uh, but uh, anyway, had a lot of time there, uh, but um, spent a lot of time in just, you know, when I was bored uh, going over to Alcatraz to, uh, in the uh, early evenings after I got done with my meetings. Uh, but I met several people. They used to have people there that had written books about their time there, and they would sign the books, and they had little tables out there, and they'd push their books. One guy was, uh, I don't know, he was probably 75 at the time. Uh, had been there for 12 years, uh, done some piddling stuff, uh, but he was a big escape artist, so they shipped him there. So he really hadn't done anything for him. Uh, he stole some minor stuff when he was a kid. Anyway, his, uh, his uh, sister uh, had become a big-time uh, person over at the uh, hospital there in San Francisco and came over and talked to him, and after he'd been there for about 10, 12 years, Decided he wasn't going to quit. He was going to quit trying to escape and set his life on a, uh, a better path. Became a radiologist, trained as a radiologist, uh, kept his nose clean, got out, uh, spent 30 years uh, at that time. Finally got pardoned in 1986. But uh, he told me about all the different people in there. And uh, I bought him a few beers on the way back from the island a couple of days. And uh, he would go into pretty big detail, but uh, I have to tell you one thing. If you ever see the Birdman of Alcatraz, uh, and they, you know, he's kind of presented as not that bad a guy. Uh, he said between the guards and uh, the inmates, it was, uh, he, he thought it was almost impossible that the guy actually died from natural causes. He thought that at any day, at any minute, someone was going to kill him. He was the most vile and despicable person human being the guy said he ever met and he was in there with a bunch of cutthroats and killers uh but the bird man of alcatraz finally i think they tossed the bird man out sent him to the springfield uh missouri uh, penitentiary that actually has a hospital for those folks eh, interesting times if you ever get a chance to go see it it's well worth the trip to go out and, and uh, be on the rock we'll see you later TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And we're back. I had a couple people email me and ask Jim Quinlan, Q U I L L E N, Alcatraz from the Inside, the Hard Years. And uh, he was there for. Uh, Ten years. Uh, anyway, uh, a very interesting guy, a very interesting story of redemption. But uh, he died in 1998. I couldn't remember the year, but I remember going back one year, and uh, and he wasn't there anymore. And I asked, and they said he had passed away. Anyway, been out there a bunch of times. Uh, again, not much else happening. We want to get into charts fairly quickly. Uh, we've been talking a lot about, uh, where is it at here, about uh, NVIDIA the last couple of days. Um, and basically, yeah, I'm going to say that I was pretty right on the fundamental part of it. What I was unsure about was how the market would react to it. I figured that there wasn't much uh, to the upside in NVIDIA, and I said, go ahead and sell it if you're long. This thing has had a history of uh, rotating back down. Uh, through earnings and then, you know, two months later, move back up. This may be it, but I think you get one more test at the top in this thing, or there's a good chance that you do. It's probably going to be mid-fall where a lot of competition starts coming in. But uh, if you uh, missed the last couple of shows, shame on you. But I will recap. NVIDIA uh, had really been capitalizing on the machine learning part of the market. You can do uh, with a fast i7 processor from Intel uh, to do some of the models that would take you about eight months, uh, could take you about three months on NVIDIA processors. The newer ones that came out uh, about four months ago, three months ago, man, let's call them four months ago, uh, could bring that down to a single day. And it did it by parallel processing, i.e. most of the stuff in machine learning it's just adding and subtracting numbers. And, of course, uh, these video cards, all they are are a, are a bunch of very small processors, kind of like hand calculators, but very, very fast hand calculators hooked up to very, very fast memory to do all that 
uh, fairly many digits, but not a lot of different things. You're either multiplying, dividing, or uh, adding or subtracting. Handful of multiple things that calculators do, and of course, machine learning was set up exactly that way. So the process is about the same. Uh, but what we were saying is everybody uh, in, was piling into machine learning this spring, uh, mostly because of Google's new uh, open source software that would allow people to really do this at home and at their local businesses. Uh, again, it, it got to the point where buying a couple of their $700 cards was not a bad deal. I did. And uh, uh, behind the wall behind me is a machine in there whirling away at most of the day. Uh, I've noticed the bills, my electric bills have gone up, but of course summer uh, is around here too, but much more than last summer. Anyway, uh, these things do math very quickly, and it's like having a, I think I said a dump truck worth of hand calculators, but very fast and all hooked to memory to do all these calculations. So pretty cool, but they couldn't handle the uh, demand early on. And so what you had was everything going out there pretty much full pop retail. What we did see in the last couple of months is that demand was starting to get satisfied and you were starting to see from 799 that you could buy these things for well lately maybe in the six, mid 600s. I paid a little over seven, I think 700 bucks a piece for mine uh, when I bought them. And it, as that margin starts to fall, especially people on Will, uh, Wall Street, really are nervous about that. Uh, as long as, we'll see this in Apple's next earnings call, but they have like 65% margins. NVIDIA's margins are much harder to figure out because they have a lot of different businesses. But Apple's 90% of all their money in cash, uh, maybe 95 all comes from the iPhone, so it's pretty easy to tell. Uh, but, you know, you just lose a couple, two, three, or four or 5% in margin makes a monster change in the forecast and the curve going forward in the growth. My thoughts though are that NVIDIA is maybe one quarter away from a very long-term top where many different companies are gonna come in and compete. I can't imagine that anybody that with half a brain on Wall Street that's an analyst probably hadn't figured that out too. They, they've had a virtual monopoly. In fact, that's kind of a theme going on right now. And that is the monopolies for different products, uh, whether it's Facebook uh, with its uh, social networking or Google uh, with its uh, search uh, or Amazon with everything. Man, they went after, I didn't, I'd hate to sidetrack, but they, they're actually trying to get into two new businesses. One, they're trying to go after the uh, concert business and sell tickets. And the secondary thing that I saw this morning was that they were working on buying CO2 plants to make dry ice to send you your dinners every day. And uh, I wonder how that's going to work out. But, uh, eh, I digress. Anyway, back to NVIDIA. Uh, down, lots of volume. It's done this before, though. Um, I'm not exactly sure whether you're going to have one more bite at the apple up here at the highs, but my guess is that in the next quarter we start seeing a great deal of competition. There's a, there's a smattering of it now uh, with a product from Intel and Google. Um, they actually are making these, uh, what they call Tesla, or uh, test or processors that you can actually hook up to a USB stick and for like laptops that don't have them already. Apple's talking about putting these things in their, uh, in their, uh, iPhones for the next generation. Now these aren't going to be powerful enough to do a whole lot, but there's the, the machine learning is asymmetric. That is, you spend a lot of this time processing, teaching and learning uh, the algorithms, and then actually implementing them is fairly quick. It doesn't take near the horsepower that it takes to actually learn the model. So you can apply it, but uh, generally eh, most things move along. You always, are, especially if you're an Amazon or a Microsoft or a Google or a Facebook, every night they're running these models. So they needed tons of everything they could get to run them. And that's kind of hit its level off point. 
Then the next point's going to be, of course, when NVIDIA gets some competition. And since video cards do a great deal that you don't need uh, to do, i.e., you don't need to hook a video display to it, uh, so that all that stuff can leave. Uh, a lot of that's very hot, which again means you have to have a fan. You know, there's a lots of ways to cut the price down to this to very little or nothing. And that's what I think all the competitors or would be competitors in NVIDIA are doing very quick. I think that uh, uh, companies like Micron and Intel may have a, uh, well, going to make money either way. That is, that they're going to have faster uh, memory to sell to, to folks. Uh, NVIDIA really doesn't have its own memory division, and that's going to be a weakness that goes forward. Anyway, maybe one more bite at the apple at the highs for NVIDIA. After that, I think it's going to be uh, a little less of a monopoly. We'll be back after this. Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. Well, oh, feel a little loud there. Um, and we're back. I'm going to figure out what else is going on here. Uh, anyway, we've talked about NVIDIA. We've kicked that dead horse. It's down. Everybody in the world's talking about it. I don't think I did watch a couple of segments on infotainment uh, cable today on financial infotainment cable, as I call it. And it didn't seem much had uh, changed out here. 
turn that down just a little. Um, and so, uh, eh, I don't think there's anything more to add on it. Um, we did want to catch back up with what I thought was the theme of the day yesterday, and that was uh, many of these stocks uh, that are the most well-known. Uh, come on. Come on, Mr. Intel. we got to get moving. Okay, there we go. Uh, hadn't really done bad. Today it's off a little bit more. Um, but, you know, the same kind of hit a high. It's kind of rolled over a little bit here. But my guess is this thing's probably starting uh, a pullback into an ABC up um, and actually looked pretty good. Uh, up on strong volume on the first, and that volume was 38.7 million shares. Today we're down on 13 million shares. So you are you don't have a lot of drive in a lot of these. Let's go ahead and take a look at Apple real quick and see if we get anything on that one. Again, this thing uh, may have bottomed yesterday. 154.63. Uh, to, 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 when is the next earnings date on that? Uh, let's look up real quick. Uh, get it here. Hang on a second. Okay, October 31st. Um, so you've got that, you got a long time, and of course, I don't see anything out here that changes the theory. The only thing that really could hit, hit Apple hard is, of course, that uh, tax reform, especially repatriate, uh, repatriation of cash gets hard. Uh, we've got Foxconn, they've pretty much convinced, or at least, con not convinced, um, our are saying that it's probably true that this thing is at least going to be a thousand dollars from 7.99 before, and maybe as much as 1,200 bucks retail. Uh, the components are very expensive. They've confirmed. That's the word I was looking for. And again, you can give me a call at eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight, or email me at path at tfnn dot com. Uh, anyway, uh, looking back at Apple, uh, just uh, you know. Kind of in the middle of the trading range. Could this get back down to 153? It could. Uh, but my guess is that this thing will ramp uh, probably all the way through October. Uh, the PR machine has never been better for Apple. And, of course, they're talking about all kinds of new uh, ideas uh, that your iris will uh, be able to unlock your phone. So look forward to people stealing people's eyes balls. And, uh, of course, uh a machine learning chip inside it, but who knows what they're going to do with that. Maybe they've got some use, maybe they don't. Maybe, you know, Apple's kind of big for building things and saying, hey, this is going to be cool. And then eh, it just goes nowhere, kind of like the uh, the watch. Kind of a, well, it seems interesting. Dick, Dick Tracy had one, so I think we need to have one. The reality, of course, a lot of times is different, but uh, Apple's been very lucky over the years. They built the uh, original Apple and in 1980 had uh, a spreadsheet save their bacon because they were going out of business. In what, uh, 87, they were going out of business with a Macintosh and up pop desktop publishing and they made a load. Um, they've always been there. In fact, they were going out of business in 2002 and without a loan of about $500 million from Bill Gates, uh, to Apple, they would have been out of business. And of course, they they kind of stumble around and eventually hit stuff. Um, but it doesn't sound like there's a whole lot new coming out. Uh, most of it sounds like Apple is trying to figure out how to build incrementally better products that no one else has access to and try to get back their monopoly powers. They really, truly hate every one of the displays they sell that Samsung makes a dime on. They kind of feel that uh, Samsung should just do it for free because Apple's such a great bunch. A um, little bit of the fallout yesterday in Apple all was also was because of uh, Qualcomm and the lawsuit between Apple and Qualcomm. Qualcomm is basically uh, being very vocal now uh, about the downsides of using the Broadcom uh, uh, modem 
in the next version of the iPhone that it may not be fast enough. Um, right now, Apple does have some pre-release versions of this phone that are apparently being made at about 30 a week as they're trying to figure out what they're going to do. It's not clear that these will be phones that go to market. They may only be for internal testing at this moment, but they've set up the first internal line. So you're probably going to start seeing some leaks fairly soon. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. What else do we have out here? Okay, buying Bitcoin, selling Bitcoin, owning Bitcoin. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Well, I didn't think I talked to anybody into buying Bitcoin. I'm always worried about the one day that it's worth nothing. And uh, yeah, you never know. Uh, let's take a look at some other ones out here in FLX. Oop. Let's go here in FLX. Um, we talked about this thing coming back to a buy point. And if you still think that there's a future for Netflix, uh, you you pretty much got into the area yesterday where you should have bought it, which is probably about 168. That's halfway into this gap up that had uh, 41.6 million shares. You hit it with 10 million shares yesterday. Uh, you can't get a clear signal. I don't know if there's that much money left in it, if it's just a retest of the 191.50 top. It kind of bounced down on Disney's uh, discussion, but I don't think that matters much. Uh, the uh, In Associated News and Snooze, Amazon is also, uh, has hired uh, away the creator for The Walking Dead uh, to make shows on Amazon Prime. And uh, so whenever he's done with the, the stuff he's doing with AMC, all the new stuff will be on Amazon. He got a uh, little higher volume into the July 3rd low that had 3 million shares with uh, 5.6 million, yeah, 5.7 million shares yesterday. Today is a little light volume. Um, energy was not all that exciting off uh, the July 27th high. As I've said before, if you're trading any of these, for God, hell, uh, for uh, help you if you're trading the equity you need to be using the options and uh, we'll talk a little bit about that why it's coming back but a uh, lot more articles about uh, monopolies this week discussions about monopoly and of course nothing bigger than uh, google as a monopoly this week we'll look at that when we come back If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. 
Looking to diversify? Everbank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And as we come back, <clears throat> want to talk a little bit about Google. Um, this has been kind of an interesting stock this week. Uh, it's pulled back. You had some fairly decent volume yesterday. Certainly the kind of volume uh, going into the last low, it was a little higher, uh, July 3rd. Uh, that was 9.15.31. Yesterday got into that candle, kind of bounced a little. Yesterday was uh, 2.7 million shares. So you exceeded the last July 3rd low. This thing did gap down on earnings. I thought this thing was probably in pen. Uh, pen I can't even say it. Uh, impenetrable. Impenetrable? Impenetrable. And it's close enough for government work. Um, anyway, uh, but I've seen something that's actually started that I talked about a year ago. And that is the big brotherism that is now going and becoming pervasive in Silicon Valley. They are defunding any kind of content that they think that anybody will complain about. Uh, and of course, it's not whether you complain, but if it follows what they believe is the, uh, is the right opinion. Uh, so if you have a different opinion, uh, like uh, earlier in the week, these guys were getting kind of beat up for firing one of their employees. When they asked for different opinions, he actually gave one and apparently no one wanted to, to uh, actually hear different opinions. They just said that they wanted to. So, you know, in, at the same time, uh, that kind of overshadowed what was happening earlier in the week. And that is the, the mass defunding of huge amounts of uh, uh, videos. You can still post them on there. But as a content creator, you will not be making any more money off of these and some of these have millions of subscribers on a daily basis so these guys are going to go from making millions to making uh, zero on google's platform uh, google's been so good that they are a monopoly you can't go anywhere else and i think between amazon uh sticking and poking its finger in the eye of the uh, bull every day with literally nothing that they haven't figured out that they want to get into uh, Google, uh, basically a monopoly. If you don't to subscribe to their politics, uh, you will not uh, be allowed to uh, be a, a thing. I'm thinking this opens up a, not only problems that can come from the government for restrictions of trade, uh, but 
opens up a big uh, opening for somebody that doesn't uh, push big brotherism on all of its content. Uh, you're not going to ever agree with everything that uh, on an open forum or something that puts on a bulletin board. You don't have to, but they've kind of come to the idea that they do have to be the arbiters of what is politically correct and what isn't. And uh, there are more than, I think, three different groups now that are looking at throwing some big money at going in uh, for Google for not only YouTube, but for search too. Because Google, uh, Google got its hands caught several times in the cookie jar of uh, basically pushing a, a political party's agenda uh, by uh, controlling what comes back from the search. So uh, from Facebook, well, we've got uh, basically a uh, budding citizen Kane to Google, who's kind of close to Big Brother. We're seeing these guys actually start to use the power and their uh, monopoly power uh, for probably uh, not the best of intentions. Uh, my guess is that Google is the is the most open here, not to antitrust, but from somebody opening up something uh, where 50% of America doesn't agree with maybe their politics uh, and shutting that down, that always opens the door for someone else to come in. And you always want to, if you're a monopoly like Google, you want to try to keep every, you know, they played nice or they attempted to play nice, but this last week is probably the end of at least a couple of a hundred of the biggest content producers. So you want to watch this over the next couple of weeks. I think that they're opening up uh, a lot of competition elsewhere. Um, oh, it's talking about, uh, uh, da, 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 okay, uh, what about using options to trade these? Uh, that's why. There's I, I, I forgot about talking about that. There is uh, already on Apple an investigation uh, into antitrust along because of the uh, Qualcomm Apple uh, deal. And if you're unfamiliar with that, let's take a quick look at Qualcomm. Uh, the thing is just waking up one day and seeing what happened to Microsoft in 1998 when I think the price got cut in half. And you're thinking, how could Microsoft get cut in half in a day? Was it 2003 or was it 1998? I'll have to think about that again. Anyway, huge down day for uh, Microsoft. When they got involved in it, I think that you could find uh, our government uh, announcing uh, that they were going forward in a number of ones. Uh, Qualcomm had their chip, kind of got beat up by China. Uh, saying that they were doing some things that were anti-competitive. <laughs> uh, that's the uh, kettle calling the uh, pot black. Uh, anyway, uh, Apple decided to beat up Qualcomm for better prices uh, in public. Eventually, Qualcomm said, uh, up yours. Uh, we make a better product. We can charge more for it. And is actively been pushing the notion that the Broadcom the device uh, uh, modem uh, in the uh, that Apple's going to be using in their next phone is not as fast, literally won't be fast enough for the new faster speeds on uh, on uh, cellular. So Apple wasn't happy. They doubled down. Qualcomm doubled down. Kind of a, a North Korean uh, U.S. kind of thing going on here between these two. Not exactly sure who's who. But Qualcomm finally has said oh, enough is enough and probably quietly lodged uh, some uh, complaints to the Justice Department. And I think you may see that uh, they are very responsive to this because of uh, the uh, overwhelming amount of money that Apple makes in that market. Um, it could be considered antitrust for someone is the single biggest manufacturer of a cell phone. So now you start looking at the rest of these big companies out here. It could happen to any one of them. It could happen any day. One thousand dollar stocks. You probably don't want to be buying the equity in the first place. But secondly, that does if you buy the options, go three months out if you want long term. You just can't think that the risk reward on these things are that good when any day Amazon could have an antitrust thing go against it. Any day on Apple, uh, this Qualcomm ruling could go against them. Amazon 
literally does stuff every day to poke the uh, finger in the eye of uh, these companies uh, and the rest of the companies. Eventually, everybody's just going to complain, and the government's probably going to act because if there's ever been a poster child for anti-competitive behavior, it's Amazon. Not saying that this will happen in a day or two. It, you probably won't even be able to predict it. I'm just saying that short or long, don't be in these hundred and two hundred and thousand dollar stocks without probably just using options. It limits your risk right away. You don't have to lose the whole thing. You can get three months options, so that's fine. But uh, just watch it because I, this is starting to bubble to the surface. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full time trader and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light speed world of ever evolving high tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we got a little fade going into the close, but, you know, normally when you're going to get these uh, huge pull downs, you get into Friday. Uh, man, they go after the uh, the market in a fury, especially at the close. So you want to hang on with Tom O'Brien for the next hour and see how these markets do close. We're kind of fading a little bit, but uh, eh, probably pretty much expected. Um, my guess is that if we open up Monday and we don't get a real uh, hit today on the close, that we probably could see kind of a, a B to C uh leg actually start to form next week during expiration. Volumes 2.2 billion shares on the NYSE consolidated tape, so it's fairly good today. 
Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on some how some of these things, and of course, some of the uh, most shorted stocks out here in the world have uh, kind of bounced today. People taking a little bit of money off the table from the short side. GDX is up uh, a little bit more today going into the weekend too. And uh, what I didn't look at gold in the last little bit here. It's up five bucks, still under 1300 bucks at 1295. Uh, may have seen some kind of bottom in UNG. We've been talking about that for a while, natural gas. Finding some kind of low seasonally out here. We got a little doji on no volume today. I think this could come back to around the 650 level. Uh, and at that point, might be looking at light volume of finding a low. Your previous low is 620. Ideally, you like this thing to come back down to test the low on lighter volume. This is kind of, well, within a couple of days of the seasonal low in natural gas. So you probably got your back to the wall at least a bit. It's a little high to be jumping in now. Uh, you may not get that test of that low. Again, that 620 August 1st low. But uh, if you can get that on light volume, that probably makes your uh, your risk reward about as good as it can get. Uh, but uh, who knows? Next week will be all brand new, I promise you. And in the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you Monday. St. Bat Channel, St. Bat Time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.